Hi there, thanks for joining me again back in the garage. Got a nice little treat today. This is the X-Tool scanner. It's the D7S, uh, bi-directional, should be a good bit of kit. Um, we're gonna yeah, put it through its paces and see what it can do. Let's whip it out of the box. Comes in a really nice, hefty plastic case, metal latches on it. Get some destructions, chargers, EOBD lead, charging point again, uh, plug adapters, USB cable, and then under the Velcro straps, we've got a piece of foam to protect it, and then the scanner itself. So let's have a little look. We'll power it up. Whoa, look at that. It's a really nice weighted bit of unit, that is lovely. Got the bracket on the back for hanging it on the steering wheel or putting it on the workbench. Rubberized edges, feels lovely, feels a nice bit of kit, which is always a good start if it feels good. Um, we'll check the battery ratings on it and see what kind of power it's got. Feels like it's got a decent bit of uh, battery in there. So it's just powering up at the minute. We'll do the updates on it, we'll get it all loaded up. Uh, it shouldn't take long. It's got a really fast processor in it, again, so it's, you know, it should be quite quick at downloading. As you'd expect, it's got a nice touch screen on it, nice and sensitive as well. We'll just go for the update on these, and just to show you how quick they come in, this is real time, and yeah, it's rapid. On some of the machines that I've tested, it can be a real long process trying to download the updates, but not with this one. Look at that, 14.2 megabytes per second i mean that's quick and that one that's coming in there for the usa ford that's a big file three years free updates with the machine so you've not got to worry about that bingo give it two seconds and then it'll just sort itself out there we go all done all software's up to date we'll give that a back arrow it takes us back to the main screen and the update symbol disappears now i noticed the first time i plugged this in it's rapid so i'm going to straight away do a speed test against the top don arted iag pro okay speed comparison on the two this is the arted iag pro let's go for it and see what happens now straight away when you plug the arted iag pro in it it automatically goes for a detect so it tries to look for the vin number I've held it back a second on the uh, X tool because I've had to press the button to start that one. It's not a problem though because it does do me heading sometimes with the Artidag Pro and it automatically goes and you don't want to do the full read. But anyway, here we go. The two are running side by side. We've started them at exactly the same time. I've had to just press the button there to, yeah, and you see they're almost synchronized here. We're not too far apart. You have to give it the odd okay. And then we just press do the full system scan and look at that straight away it's done the RTDI Pro is still going fast <laughs> it is fast it's rapid RTDI Pro is still waiting it's still it's still loading and I love the RTDI Pro it's a cracking bit of kit it's really good whereas this X tool now times money at the end of the day who wants to wait around if you can get the results and get the get the scanning done quickly I know which one I'm going to be picking up. There you go, one minute and five seconds. That's a big difference. Big difference. And all the results were the same. The codes were exactly the same, the faults that they found. So, uh, yeah, the two machines did the same job. So let's plug it into the car. This is BMW 1 Series. It's a 2013 plate uh, E82. We just plugged that straight into the diagnostic socket. So we've got the nice handy flip on the back. Get that on there, do them up nice and tight. Okay, okay, let's have a little look then, see if we can figure out what's going on. Let's just do a, a quick scan on here. And once again, because we've already got the BMW program in, this has gone in even quicker. So straight in, press OK, and yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely flying. Automatic scan, and there we go. It's got a few different faults on it. This one that we'll have a look into. That's nice. Everything that's good, it shoves at the bottom, and anything that's faulty, it pops at the top. 
So we've got something wrong with the footwell module. What fault's it going there? So quick look, see if it'll tell us. Um, rear fog light, adaptive brake light. So this on the left side. So the ball gone at the back by the looks of things there. That's really nice. That's a fast um, parking distance. Lines rear left ultrasonic sensor straight away. It's actually telling us which one it is now. When I've read this on another one, it didn't give us that until we actually went into the sensors individually. This is coming straight out of it. Really nice. Uh, combi, what's that one? Instrument cluster power. Okay, so there is some kind of probably intermittent issue with the combination um, or the speedo system up top there, the combined instrument panel. Uh, engine system, we've got the, the usual suspects there. Uh, brake vacuum sensor, uh, particulate filter, and glow plug one activation, a little issue there as well. Nothing there that I'm too concerned about. We can have a look at those uh, at a later date. Um, that, that is sweet though. Right, so let's go to the one we want here, which is this one, the parking sensor. Let's just um, try and clear all of these. We can go clear all DTCs. And we've just got to switch the ignition off and then put it back on again. Now, not every unit will read parking sensors in the body control module, but this one does. Still saying we've got a parking sensor fault. So let's click on it, onto the diagnostics, and then we can do a check on the live data. Let's just have a look at distance sensors and see what it's saying. It's saying 254 on all of them, but you need to have it in reverse for it to pick anything up. Let's go into parking distance warning status. So we can check the button, I'm pressing the button, that's working. Reverse gear, we're in reverse, so it likes that. Uh, powered by ultrasonic sensors, eight and a half volts. Supply voltage, 11, fault is stored. So it gives us loads of information that we can look at, which is all gonna help us into diagnosing the fault and the issue that's with the car. We'll read the trouble codes, and then we can go to that little magnifying glass symbol there, which takes us on an internet search for the faults. So it goes straight to Google and gives us some answers. Right, engine system control. Let's go into diagnostic there. Uh, read trouble code. Uh, we've got the vacuum sensor. We know that's wrong. I don't know about this one, though. The 452A. Let's have a little look at that, see if we've got any information on it. What does it tell us about it? Anything? Um, okay, and it does a Google search for you if you press the, which is pretty cool. Except all oh, the cookies. Right, here we go. Right, so we're into Google. 452 is, uh, oh, it's the, <coughs> I should have known that. It's saying the particulate filter has exceeded its mileage. We did a video on this one. So we can now hopefully do the reset with this tool. I could do it with the Top Don um, RTDiag Pro. Can we do it with this one? Let's go back to the car, which is the little tab there. So the particular filters, they have a mileage on them. They say, well, this has done 130,000 miles, so it must have exceeded its amount that they say it can do. Um, so what we need to do now is find it in all the settings. So let's have a little look, see if we can go out of that. Yeah, we wanna leave that. It should be in service function somewhere. It's maintenance, possibly. Power, this is like a powertrain. This function could be really handy. It's the steering column lock reset. It's got a fixed life of about 250,000 releases, and once it's reached that, the car won't release the steering wheel. So, reset with that great feature. We'll just give that a press, and then we can reset it while we're here. We might as well do it, and then we can get back to the DPF. Done. But yeah, awesome that is. How easy was that? Okay, let's see if we can find that DPF reset. Okay. Uh, 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 injector correction, temporary increase, brake booster test, open and closing. Somewhere in here. Um, Can you find it? Can you see it before me? Ah, there it is. I can see it now. Ah, here we go. Particular filter replace. So we click on that and we can now reset it as if we put a new one on there 
So you can read the remaining mileage, see how long it says you've got left on your filter. So let's just go into that. It's saying it's got 51, remaining mileage is 51,000. Okay, well, that doesn't make sense, but uh, um, let's go back into this and we'll tell it we've replaced it. Um, do you want to reset the trim values? Yes, let's try that, see if we can uh, reset the values. Yeah. Okay. So now let's, let's just re go back on that again and read the remaining mileage. You said 52 originally. What does it say now? Oh. Come on. Oops. Read the remaining mileage. Continue. Aha, there we go, look. <laughs> We're back up to 250,000 miles. So hopefully now, when we go back out of this, and we'll go back out of that as well. Um, let's just do a code read on it. So we've got that. Let's now clear the code on it. Let's go back. Clear code, fast code clearance. Will it let me do that on this section without going to the other one? Um, turn off the ignition. Wait for five seconds. I'll put the ignition back on again. Okay, that. And let's just do a code read again. Bingo. So we've got rid of now the DPF fault that it was saying we had. That's cleared. So all we're left is the brake vacuum uh, sensor signal, which we know is the, va yeah, we have did a video on that. There's a, there's a sensor on the brake vacuum diaphragm that, that sometimes goes funny. So that is obviously something that we could look at if we want to. All it does is affects the start stop system, which we're not bothered about, I hate it. Let's have a quick look at that one as well, see what Google says on that. So again, there's no running issues, but it gives you this fault. Um, possibly glow plug to be replaced. So the, or the controller. So it could be either the glow plug or the controller, which is a bit weird. But we're not fussy because it starts and runs lovely. So I'm not going to be too bothered about that. Right, we can run with a couple of faults in there. And we know what they are. X tool. Um, is working well though at the minute. I'm pretty pleased with how that's working. What's that one there? Let's have a quick look at that. So this is just telling you data about how to do certain uh, functions, if you're not sure. It's not actually doing anything, actually. It's just giving you information, which it says it's a user manual. Um, special functions. Key program instrument cluster, power balance, seat calibration, TPMS reset, EEPROM, language, um, ABS bleeding, speed limiter, speed limit, what's this then? Oh, it's not written as Europe. Doesn't give us BMW on that. It only gives us a few. Uh, DPF, let's just have a quick look in that and see what it gives us in. Oh, okay, then it's taken us through to uh, Europe again, let's have a look, BMW, let's just see what it says on the DPF, if it does take us to that original menu that we look for, usually these are all just different routes into the same menus, there you go, so we could have just gone quickly into that menu through that uh, maintenance, which is really cool. ABS bleeding, we should be able to get the pump working on this. If you want to do a proper ABS fluid change, you'll need to bleed the fluid out of the ABS pump using this procedure. Bingo. And this allows you to bleed the fluid out of each corner of the car. It does them one at a time, one wheel at a time. That's cool, isn't it? So we can get it working the ABS pump to bleed the brakes up if that's what you that's what you want. So it just goes through all of the brakes while it's, uh, I might have to go through the whole uh, process now. I don't know if it'll let us stop doing it. Now, one thing I really want to do is to see if I can get the fuel pump working to bleed the fuel system, which is what I had the 
top done does it. Will this do it? I've just got to find it. Um, drive, engine. Oh, electric fuel pump control unit. Uh, actuation, fuel pump. It should get it going. Yes, there it goes. So the fuel pump is now running, which allows you to bleed the fuel system. If you've had to remove an injector or interfere with the pump. Live data. Just go to fuel system a second, see what we've got in here. So we've got everything that we need. So we've got all of the sensors. If we fire the car up again, 49 different things. Boost pressures, exhaust gas temperature before the converter. Uh, regeneration request regeneration so we can check all of that um, calculated particulate filter miles remaining we know we've just done that we just reset it back pressure we've got all the usual suspects uh, in there we can get to all the sensors that you need to get data from and put them onto graphs you can run eight things at once on the graphs call it temperature Now, rear wheel speed sensors on the BMWs has always been a bit of an issue with the rings corroding and it'd be nice to get a graph up and actually see what the patterns are of the rear wheel sensors and how corroded my rings are or you know, the condition of the rear sensors. Wheel speed signals, we can actually get the ABS. We all know we have problems with the rings on these. So we can go for speed on all of the sensors get that into a custom graph and then if we move the car we can see there that the which one's smooth and which one's not and just from moving it that tiny bit on the driveway we can see that them well three of them are not very not very good the smoother the pattern the better and when they're a bit jerky, you know that the rings are failing. Settings, I'm gonna change the units to metric. You can connect it to Xtool and they can remotely do stuff to your car for you. Okay, we'll pop the ignition on the car. And we're going to special functions. And we're looking for brake service electronic parking brake and it's an Audi replace the brake pads okay so we press one and you can hear the motors rewinding there there we go so that's separated the brake pads, nice and simple. So we've got to press number two now. This automatically applies the handbrake, releases it, applies it, releases it to make sure everything is in place and the handbrake's working well. Okay, brake is now engaged. End brake replacement mode, which is number one. Bingo. How easy is that? So all in all, the Xtool D7S is a pretty impressive bit of kit. It's not bad at all. It's got lots of functions in there. The bi-directional controls are really useful. We managed to do the brake pad replacement, which is telling it to move those motors back and retract the pistons. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really yeah, good bit of kit. Good bit of kit for, kit for your garage or a good bit of kit just for if you're a bit of a a prosumer kind of person lots of information lots of power to diagnose and fix your car um, as you saw again with the parking sensors you know it picked out the lines that were broken yeah a really really good bit of kit um, if you've enjoyed the video drop me a little thumbs up like subscribe drop me some comments always love your comments see you in the next video take care
Tasting to be a good